Hello, 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 hello. Yes, it is I. I'm back. And today we're going to be looking at one of these. Yes, this comes from Aramie, uh, and it's the Gill Kit. Now, it comes with a device, a uh, 18650 mod, as well as the Gilly Tank, also from Aramie. So let's uh, go down there, have a look, and then we'll come back and we'll see what it vapes like. See you in two. So, as I've just mentioned, we're looking at the Army Gill Kit today. Uh, and Army is a division of Kangatech. Uh, so we'll see some similarities between this and other Kangatech devices. Um, you can see there it's a sample, not for sale. And that's because this was sent to me by Kangatech, along with some other stuff that we've been looking at over the past few weeks. Um, let's open a box and I'll show you what you get. So, first of all, you get the device itself. You also get the Arami Gilly tank. You get a USB to micro USB cable. They're getting quite short these days. This is uh, relatively short, but it will suffice for what you need to do. You get a couple of spare atomizer coils. Uh, and these are they're very different in their shape and their structure and we'll look into that a little bit later on you get some cotton so you can re-wick these coils you also get a couple of spare uh, rings and if i can get this out of the box because it is quite difficult to get out there we go <laughs> you get a replacement glass tank uh, which is fairly small as you can see um, so you get all that included in the kit. Now, if you buy the tank on its own, you get a similar thing. You get two spare coils, some cotton, a couple of O-rings and a spare tank. So we'll just put these back for the moment. And we'll focus on the unit itself, which is here. Let me zoom in. And here we go. This is the device itself. This one's a stainless steel one. They are available in some other finishes as well. It takes an 18650 battery, which is held in place by a magnetic cover. I've already got one in here. An 18650 3.7, 2600 milliamp hour battery I have in there. It has the micro USB charging port on the bottom. Up here is your fire button. And then here is the plus and minus, which is all in one button. A bit like a similar device I showed you a couple of weeks ago, uh, where you do plus and minus. So this is a five click on, five click off device. So if we'll, it's currently off. So we'll just let that disappear and then we'll turn it on. Uh, it's one, two, three, four, five. Brings up the Arami logo and then straight into your exceptionally clear display. And you can see there the, uh, that from the top down to the bottom, it tells you the wire that you're using, the current temperature, the power, which is always going to be 75 watts in temperature control mode. And then it gives you the resistance of your coil. This is 0.74 ohms. This is actually a sub tank I have on here. Uh, and then the bottom gives you your battery status. Now I've charged this battery via the micro USB port um, from flat. So it works really well. Uh, and just a note on the charging, there was zero heat coming from this as it was charging, uh, which I thought was exceptional. Um, I would have expected it to be a little bit warm, um, especially as it is metal, but it was perfectly cool all the way through the charging process, which uh, stands it in good stead, really. Um, on the menu, it's very similar to devices I've shown you recently. Um, currently, we're in NI, so if we do three clicks... It will take you into TI for titanium. Three clicks again into stainless steel 316L. Three clicks again takes you into NC, which is nichrome. I've not tried that yet. Um, I do have a few miles of nichrome from back in the day, so I must try a nichrome coil. And then three clicks again takes you into power mode. Uh, and it's, it's looking at 16.6 on there at the moment. This will go from 7 watts to 75 watts in power and 75 is the top level. Three clicks again takes us back into NI, and this is a stainless steel coil, so we're going to do 
three clicks again and another three clicks there we go so we are now in stainless steel mode and a little vape so as i said the wattage is set at 75 watts uh, and then you simply change your temperature as desired using the plus and minus and this goes from 200 degrees Fahrenheit to 600 degrees Fahrenheit and then it will turn around from Fahrenheit in 2 centigrade and it goes from 100 centigrade all the way up to 300 in 5 degree increments once you get to 300 it will cycle around from centigrade into Fahrenheit and that starts at 200 and takes you up to the 600. So I like Fahrenheit, don't know why, I just prefer Fahrenheit. And I'm going to take this down to my preferred temperature of 480 degrees Fahrenheit. There we go. And it works very well. So, fire button does basically three things. Firstly, it turns on and off. Secondly, it cycles around the different coils or power mode. And then thirdly, it acts your fire button, obviously. Now, the plus and minus button, if you hold down the minus, uh, let's do the plus first. If you hold down the plus and the fire button, it turns your display from black background and white text to white background and black text. I quite like that, actually. If you then press your minus button and your fire button, you can adjust the brightness of said screen, which is rather nifty. I've not seen that on many devices. And then press your fire button and that locks in the setting that you've set it. Um, I'm pretty sure that the white background with black writing is going to use more battery. Um, so I'm going to put this back to black on white. Uh, black background, white writing. <laughs> um, and it is a very clear display, as I've said. And turn the, the uh, brightness all the way up. That's full brightness. It's very bright. And we'll turn it all the way down and that is minimum. So even minimum you can see quite nicely. So I think I'm going to put it somewhere in between. About there. There you go. Um, I do like that. It's very, very clear. So that is the device itself. It does have the temperature protection. And if you hold it down for more than 10 seconds, it will cut off. Um, so it's got that protection. It's got all the protection you would expect from an electronic mod. Size-wise, it is um, fairly small. Now if I zoom out a little bit, so you can see the entirety of my hand. Now you know I've got big hands. Um, and that is a fairly small device. If we look at it up against the Rolo, you can see the kind of size. Um, this is the Juppy that we looked at recently. It's the same kind of height and it's the same kind of width, just that the Juppy's a little bit fat around the bottom there. And this is the Inakin TC100. Let me just take the atty off there. And it's slightly shorter and about the same width in total because the battery section here makes the, the TC100 slightly wider at one end. Um, so, size wise, it's quite nice, quite small. It's got nice curves, there's no kind of sharp edges, it's very smooth 
and the battery compartment has got a little indentation there for your thumbnail to uh, to pull it off quite a strong magnet I can't see that coming off without actually pulling it I'm using a bit of force here to pull this off so the magnets are fairly good um, obviously being stainless steel it is a bit more of a fingerprint magnet and a scratch magnet you can see there's a few scuffs because I've been using this with a sub tank for a week or so uh, just to get the uh, just to get the flavour of uh, of the device so I can tell you more about it really but what I've told you already is basically all there is to know yeah so let's move on to the tank itself and here it is it's quite small it's got a 3 mil capacity um, and I will zoom in a little bit for you so here is the ghillie tank from Aramie and you can see it is fairly aesthetically pleasing it's got quite a wide drip tip on the top but fear not because this comes off and you are faced with a little hole there and you can put a 510 on there if you so wish which is handy and I like the stainless steel actually on there so you never know I might do that it comes completely apart let me take it apart and then you can see so you've got your drip tip which fits in the top there you've got your top section then this section slides off and that brings with it the atomizer head which fits in like so you can then to change the tank screw off the next section and you can see there that's one of the o-rings and then if you just give it a little push that's the tank out an o-ring either side and that just fits in the groove like so and there's another o-ring on this screw thread there and then we'll put that back on the right way around <laughs> put it on the right way around there we go so if you do drop it and smash the tank you do get a spare and the o-rings seem to fit quite nicely so i've done that hand tight now you'll see here those these four little sections and these are little tubes that go to the outside and that is the airflow now the airflow is not changeable it is on all the time so you've got four little tubes and they are feeding four little holes around the outside and that airflow is there all the time I guess if you wanted to cut down the airflow you could always hold your finger against two of them or three of them as you're vaping um, but uh, that remains to be seen so we'll we'll look at that once we've got some juice in there let me focus a little bit on the atomizer head itself I've never seen anything like this not at all the entire thing is the coil now I'm going to try and get as tight as I can onto this that is about as close as I can get to show you now you can see the design there are six little tabs here and this is what hold it in place in this top section so this fits inside and these little tabs hold it in place and then it's very very delicate and thin the cotton goes all the way inside and this section here that is the coil the rest of this doesn't heat up but the coil does I expect this has been laser cut um, from a sheet and then um, formed into the um, into the shape that it is but it's extremely light it's extremely delicate you can change out the wadding inside the, the, the actual wick uh, just a case of pulling it out making a tube and uh, pushing it back in again leaving a little bit of space at the bottom as you can see there 
and all the way to the top. Um, so all you'd need to do is take a pair of tweezers, pull this out, roll a new one, pull it in. And I'm pretty sure that these can probably go in a um, ultrasonic cleaner um, to get rid of any buildup and then re-wicked. But we'll try that once we've uh, once we've used one for a while. We can do a little revisit on that one. So what you do is you drop that coil assembly in and it's held in place by those six tabs and then you screw it back into the device. So what we'll do is we'll put some juice in. So I'm going to fill this tank with some of this juice and this is from Vape Kitchen. It's called Vanilla. It's a 75-25 VGPG ratio and this is a three milligram as you'll see it's got a little star there there's some stars and that one is golded out uh, so it's three milligram 75 25 uh, i do have the entire range from vape kitchen that i was very kindly given at vape fest some of them are 80 20 uh, vgpg this particular one is 75 25 it smells very nice i have to say so uh, we'll put some in the gilly tank and you fill from the top hole until you get to the max line. Like I said, it's about three mils capacity. Let me see where we're at there. Now another couple of squirts, I think. We'll give it the full experience and a little bit more okay we're now at the max line yeah we're right on the max line so that's good so i'm going to just put it on the tank for the moment so it doesn't run away so we've got it on the tank. The next thing I need to do is just prime this coil. And I'll do that in shot for you. Move that out of the way. So I'm just going to lay a couple of drops on. And I'm being quite messy. That's okay. I can clean that up. I'm going to put a drop on the bottom. Some on here, I want to get this quite wet. There we go. We're going to put this back on the tank, so it's just simply putting that back in. I need to push that down. It'll be a lot easier doing it without doing it on camera, so it always looks like it's a faff when you're doing it on camera that's because we're looking at the screen uh, not looking at the device i'm just going to push that down with my finger there we go and now what uh, our recommend is you prime the top as well with about five drops and that should do that We'll just do one more drop. There we go. Let's put the juice away. So now it's a case of putting this top section back on. Like so. And then we'll put the drip tip back on as well. There we go. I'm going to leave that to soak in. But what we'll do first of all is we'll tell it it's a new coil. So we're going to go plus new coil. And we're going to put it on power mode. It 
it's a 0.25 ohm so we're going to start this at let's say uh, 25 26 will do there we go so well let's leave this to sake in a little bit and we'll be back in two and there we go now i've bumped up the wattage to 45 um, it wasn't going to cut much at 26 that was just really to get the, the coil primed and um, so at 45 i might just take it to 50 why not because we can This is a, it's made out of canthal, the, uh, the stock coil. Hence it's on power mode. So there you go, 50 watts, 0.25 ohms. And that really pumps out some cloudage. And the taste from this juice is coming through rather nicely. So, there you go, that's the, uh, the, Aramie Gilly kit from Aramie. The uh, the kit contains the device and the tank, plus the extra bits that I showed you earlier: the spare tank, the spare O-rings, and a couple of spare atomizers, and of course the USB to micro USB cable. Let's go back up to the top, and um, I'll give you some more thoughts. So there you go. That's the uh, Aramie Gill kit. Yes. Uh, the 18650 one battery mod, multi temperature control, plus power option, and this was bundled with the Gilly tank, um, which you can buy separately, and you can buy the actual Gill mod separately. Works as, as you've seen with the uh, one 18650 battery, comes in white, black, and stainless steel. Yeah. Um, pretty much a standard mod. Um, with the exception it only goes to 75 watts in power. Um, the tank itself, very interestingly designed atomizer head. I've not seen anything like that personally. Um, and it is rather interesting. Um, and it works rather well, as you've already seen. It pumps it out like no tomorrow. Now, couple of points really. Um, point one, as I said in the little VT you saw the close up, you cannot uh, change the airflow. The airflow is constant from those four holes around equidistant around the circumference of the tank. Um, so you can't change that. You could put a finger over it or a thumb over it if you want to don't really see the point you really need to get as much airflow as possible um, and because of that increased airflow it is a bit of a whistler as you can hear it does whistle a little bit the other thing to mention is it does get rather warm and um, quite hot to the touch uh, and that is because it is getting 50 watts of power and it's a 0.25 ohm coil so you could swap out the drip tip for a metal one but it's probably better to keep it as the delrin one that comes with it and then it's not getting warm because this won't get warm whereas the metal will um, so that's something to kind of think about if you are going to swap out a drip tip maybe a ceramic one or a glass one um, or another delrin one if you want to swap it um, not for that one um, but it works exceptionally well I do like it um, and I will be trying when the coil gets really dirty I will try putting it in the ultrasonic cleaner which is behind me um, and re-wicking it and I'll show you that we'll give it a few weeks and see what happens um, and as I also explained in the close-up BT you do get two extra coils within there also a spare Pyrex tank section and two o-rings for the top and bottom of the tank. There's no spare o-ring for the little connector in the middle um, but I can't really see the need to change that unless something really drastic happens and I'm sure you've probably got one that fits in a collection of other o-rings because I've got loads of different o-rings from different kits um, dotted around the place. Um, so together it works exceptionally well. Um, a plus point for 
the device itself. I love the clear display. I like the fact that you can change it from um, white on black to black on white and you can change the brightness. I think that's uh, rather good but the display itself is very clear. Lovely to, to, uh, to see and you can get all the information really really quickly just by having a quick glance. Um, you know some of the latest devices are a little bit fuzzy around the menu and around the display. This one is clear as it's very good. Um, so in all it's rather nice yeah as I said in the in the close-up I have been using a sub tank on this for about a week just to kind of use the, the mod itself um, and I've saved using the tank for the bit of VT I did. So there you go. That's the Gilly Tank and the Gil mod from Aramie. Thanks for watching.